So, but just sometimes Pastor Dave is real quiet. And Brian Trendle, he's oh, yeah. soft spoken. Even sitting this close to him, you can't find him. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear David. Yeah. And, and John. Yeah, well. and Jeremy's voice yeah. carries. But um, David Brazel, is that how you say it? I can't even, I say him Brazel, but that's not how you say it. But. Uh, now they're gonna think I'm gossiping <laughs> yeah, about him. No. I'm just saying I can't hear you. They're <laughs> watching. <laughs> I'm naming names and they're going. Where now we have done it. I'm not gonna do it for you anymore. That's it. Okay. Well, it it is six thirty, and I just want to say hello. This is Pastor Rhonda, and we are excited to have a fun roundtable, a different roundtable tonight. Uh, than what we've usually had. We've been discussing uh, scripture and questions about our faith, but tonight, since we are heading into a new school year and a very different school year, I thought it would be great to get some of our great teachers of our congregation to come and just talk about the school year and some changes that you can expect and you've probably been um, getting information from your school but I thought it would be better to get it firsthand from our some of our teachers uh, to maybe put your mind at ease and give your kids maybe some tools to go back to school with so that the anxiety is calm uh, the fear is calm and uh, we know the Lord is in control and we really want our teachers and our kids to have a great school year and first of all I just want to say thank you to every teacher in our county. It, it, teaching is a hard job. I've spent my time in preschool teaching but um, to take care of someone else's kid is a huge responsibility and then to um, to educate them that's just a whole different <laughs> level. So thank you for all fire teachers for what you do. But before we get started I'm going to open with a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right in. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to talk freely about you. And God, I thank you so much for our teachers that are getting ready to go into a very difficult year right off the bat where it's going to be different. And Lord, we know that you are in control and that you are good and that you're going to have your hand upon each of them. And Lord, I just pray that you would be with our kids too, Lord. I pray that you would calm their fears and the changes. Some kids don't deal too well with change, but Lord, I pray that that you would open their hearts to you and you would just breathe peace into their hearts so that they can learn. It's so important to learn the, um, the necessary skills for life and the alphabet and, and math and science and all these wonderful subjects that they need to tackle in their young years. So Lord, I pray you would give them the peace that they need so that they can open their ears and they can learn. Thank you again for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, before we get started, why don't we, I'm going to let you just introduce yourself and if you will tell our viewers um, what school you are teaching in and what grade and I'll say her name. All right. Well, so with you. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Laura Dineski. Um, I teach here at the church, so I teach up at Noah's Ark. Um, I have been the George Pre-K teacher. This is my eighth year. Wow. Um, matter of fact, I was talking to one of my dads today from an older class, and I've got some going into middle school. <laughs> oh, yay! I had to process that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so I teach the Georgia Pre-K here. Um, I'm Jamie Ballou, and I teach in Walker County at Stone Creek Elementary, and I have taught for 27, this will be my 28th wow. year, mm -hmm. and so I am teaching my former students' children now, so <laughs> it really is bad, so, and um, this year I'm teaching kindergarten, so it should be great. a lot of fun. Um, and I'm Ashlyn Ballou. Um, I'll be teaching at Ringgold Primary, and this is my first year of teaching, so Yay. I'm right out of college. And I'll be teaching second grade. It's awesome. I'm Jacob Harris. Um, I teach at Saddle Ridge. Uh, it's kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and I'm the PE teacher. Uh, this is my seventh year in PE. Before that, I was in special education. So uh, yeah. all, all middle school level. So, um, yeah. And you coach. Too, right? I uh, coach multiple sports. Yeah. Wow. It, it just depends on where we, we need somebody. Right. So. right. so as you see, we really have just about all the bases covered. We have young kids and 
a little bit older second grade all the way up to middle school and I will say we are absolutely blessed at Battlefield Parkway with a lot of educators and I started trying to name them earlier and I better not even start because I'm afraid <laughs> I will leave somebody out but Jacob's wife is here in the building if you hear something in the background um, take care of the little one but she teaches Stacy teaches fifth grade fifth grade okay. Cherokee Ridge this is her uh, 16th year in education wow so, wow yeah. wow so we have a lot of um, educators and we have retired teachers too mm -hmm. retired principal yeah. Um, so we are just really blessed, and it makes it really stressful when you're on the platform and you're trying to remember the proper grammar. <laughs> when you're speaking, you're going, I know there's all these teachers out there that are just like marking, marking me up right now. But, um, but it is a blessing to know that even though you may not be in like ministry, you, you do have a very important ministry because you're taking care of children. And even though you may not be able to pray or talk about God, we know that you carry his presence with you and you have a piece about you that you know other people can pick up on and your kids can pick up on so uh, but anyway let's get started about courses 2020 it's a crazy year and COVID has shut us down <laughs> has turned our world upside down and changed things so why don't we just start there to give us an update on maybe a few changes that our parents can expect for this year Anybody want to jump in? I think, well, one of the biggest changes that we have at Noah's Ark is that um, we're not allowing visitors mm -hmm. into the classroom. So it's just um, teachers and students, and that's it. Um, temperature checks before you come in, um, all kinds of good sanitation. And well, I'm a clean freak anyway, so. Her room is spotless. I did that stuff anyways, but it's just good that, you know, there's guidelines as to what we're supposed to follow. And I have to follow, I don't necessarily follow um, what the counties do, but I have to follow something called Bright from the Start, which is from the state because Georgia Pre-K is state funded. So I have to follow what they're telling me to do. So that's what I do. We have those rules. We're not allowing parents in either, but also our rooms are going to look maybe not as um, homey and fun as they have in the past Aww. because we've had to lose some furniture to in order to spread our desk and our tables far Aww. enough apart to um, keep everybody safe. And we've, in our county, or in our school, I don't know if it's countywide, but they've also taken our carpets out of our rooms. So. Aww. We won't have like a carpet time like normally like we do. So some things are kind of hard on your heart after, you know, with the little ones, You that's such a big piece. But we're going to make it work and we're going to make it fun and mm -hmm. try to do the same things, but just in a little different way. Be creative so right. and flexible. Right. Have they been training you about sanitizing between? I'm sure we will yeah. get a lot of it in the next <laughs> two weeks for sure. But I know like we're just all kind of not lost but we're all just you know there's a lot of questions that we all all have and we just won't know the answer until we're in the situation so you know if you as a parent are confused or you know unsure about things just know that it's not just you that's you know <laughs> right. unsure we're still unsure about things ourselves as teachers and it's our main goal you know as educators you know to teach your kids, but as well as to keep them safe. And mm -hmm. I think that we are all just as concerned uh, about their health and our health as well. Um, so just know that that is a top priority and it's probably gonna be, you know, number one for quite a while mm -hmm. when we start school back, just, you know, to make sure that everybody's safe, so. Right. And I think the whole world's confused. Yeah. <laughs> right mm -hmm. um, go ahead. Well, my class is a little bit different than everybody else's at MPE, so. Uh, one of the things they were encouraging us, our county anyway, was uh, spend more time outside if we can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, getting the kids outside and active. We're going to have to limit what we can use in our class just so you don't have so many kids touching so many things. And, right. right. Um, I know for cleaning, sanitizing purposes, you know, we're going to have to allot time at the beginning and end of classes so that we wipe down, clean, sanitize whatever we use in our class. So. Mm -hmm. um, Something else that's a little bit different is uh, the use of water fountains. I mean, every water fountain's been uh, taken down. I know that in our county that they're trying to put in those uh, 
Yeah, bottle fill. Bottle fillers, yeah. The, yeah. you know, so you can, you know, so we'll probably see a lot more kids carrying, you know, their their water bottles with them. So and they need to label those. Yeah. Yes, that's what I was just thinking. I was just yes. going to say, like, please, please, please label yeah. everything this year. Yeah. If you didn't label it before, like, even if it's a, a down to a pencil, a marker, everything, because we really want to keep their materials with them and have nobody else having to touch them so because yeah, kids will put pencil in their mouth yeah <laughs> yeah not probably your age but <laughs> well i got kindergarten oh, yes, through i got kindergarten <laughs> through eighth grade so wow and you'd be surprised what sixth graders <laughs> so, uh, can only uh, imagine <laughs> so how talking about sports how will you have wrestling and some of those sports that's more compact uh, what's contact. the word yeah, yeah contact, contact sports, sports. Well, right now it's uh, we're just following. Contestant and Walker County is not going to be a whole lot different. They're they're all following GHSA guidelines. That's what sanctions the high schools. And so, uh, whatever the middle school is doing this in this area, they're going to be following GHSA. Okay. Whatever the high school is doing, it'll trickle down. The middle schools will be doing the same thing. Okay. Um, I haven't heard anything about winter sports. No idea what wrestling or okay. basketball look like. Right now, I think the main concern is so let's let's see if we can get through fall. Let's right. see if we can get through volleyball, football, you know, right. softball. So, uh, you know, they're going to have to implement new uh, modifications and stuff. Uh, so, footballs. I haven't heard a whole lot about what football is going to look like. I know that the coaches have to clean and sanitize equipment after every practice. That means wow. wiping down every kid's helmet and for. Oh. You know, my school is not so bad. Our, our numbers aren't really high for the football team. But when you talk about heritage in Catoosa County, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we, we're having an enrollment of 1,200 kids. Your football team's probably 60 kids. That's, that's a lot to take on for coaches to, wow. you know, wow. spray and clean uh, shoulder pads and football pants and helmets every practice. Wow. That's so a lot. So it'll, it'll be a little different this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Volleyball and, and softball also have modifications, and you can always go to GHSA and look at okay. what modifications that they have for each one of the sports. So, are they allowing spectators to come in to watch, or is that too big of a crowd to have? The the, the crowd is one issue that uh, GHSA hasn't really addressed yet. Right now, they've pretty much left it to each school district to decide how they want to handle it. So, it might vary from one place to the other. Uh, one of the big things that I've seen is uh, concession stands. Will, will some school districts have concession stands? Will some will not? I know Walker County's policy is um, if it's prepackaged, they're fine. So I, uh, you know, going to games and like getting a slice of pizza or nachos or popcorn, <laughs> that stuff's not going to happen in Walker County this year, as far as I know. Well, even with passing money back and forth, and of course there's no coins anymore. No, <laughs> <right. Yeah. laughs> passing the dollar reels. <laughs> wow, it's definitely going to be different. Um, so, do you have to teach in a mask, or is that optional at this point? I know it, in like Catoosa County, it's if you can't be six feet apart, the mask needs to be on. So when we're in the hallways, if we're in the classroom, and like we're like right here, we're supposed to have a mask on. So it's kind of hard to say no that we don't have to wear a mask because I feel like everywhere that we're going to be with the kid out, we're going to have to wear a mask because we're going to be so close to each other anyway. So mm -hmm. yes, pretty much. And Walker's kind of strongly encouraging it and hoping that parents will provide them. And, I, and you can find fun, cute masks. I found one at the dollar store uh, right on the counter that was like unicorns and they had different ones for kids size two dollars so mm -hmm. you don't have to invest a lot in it and maybe get like a lanyard or something that they can hang it around their neck so it's just right there and they can put it on when they need it i read something something today that wasn't specific for walker county or katusa but it said if you're moving meaning out in the hallways and around your classroom that you should be masking if you're moving mask so and that's kind of a good little rule of thumb if you're moving around people and you can't be that six feet apart then because mm -hmm. it's hard mask. to keep little kids i mean mm -hmm. you guys have the little yeah kids. is how Number what's your four. plan to keep them six feet apart or do you have a plan that's i have 22 kids in my classroom that's impossible mm -hmm. i mean the four 
So I'll try to social distance them as much as I can, like keep them in co or like when we do small groups, your that child will stay in that small group and they won't switch to somebody else's small group, if that makes sense. They won't like like one child won't move to a different small group, they'll all stay together. Right. So I'll try to do that. But as far as me trying to social distance twenty two four year olds. Now, I'll try my best. <laughs> now, can your kids use hand sanitizer or do they make them? They can this them? year, yes. Okay. They've never been able to do that in the past. It's always been a rule that we couldn't use hand sanitizer, but this year they're saying yes, we can use okay. hand sanitizer. Good. So that's good. That's good. It used to be with the little ones, it had to be soap and water, um, mm-hmm. but now that's good. In mine, it's um, right from the start, the way they worded it is uh, mask are a recommendation, not a requirement. But if the child does wear a mask, mine may not do lanyards. That may be right. too, much too much for them. But maybe a clothespin. Mm-hmm. That way it's not a choking hazard. But a clothespin might right. work for them to clip their mask on. Right. So Definitely changes. Definitely going to look yeah. a lot different. And then I'm assuming that, like you said, no parents. Is that the same for y'all? Like, no, you won't be having, like, your Christmas party and your... Thanksgiving Walking your kids in the first yeah. day. Right. Oh, yeah. that's, kind of that's, 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 that's the big one that I yes. see. That, right. Especially yeah. for the that first week, it, yeah. you know, yeah. they usually have that little buffer period of mm-hmm. where right. I'm watching parents walk in with their kids, you know. Right. So, but it's uh, not going to be happening this year. We but. had a lounge, like a, a little area for parents to go cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they dropped our kids <laughs> off. So I guess oh. that's not going to happen yeah. this year. Awesome. My goodness. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit with all the changes. I think it's pretty natural to be appreh- apprehensive. I can't say that word. Apprehensive. And, <laughs> and have anxiety and fear. Sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like everybody, I'm restless. I guess that's the word. I think I am more than anything. I'm restless. I'm over it. I'm done. I just want love to me, but it's normal. So, how are you doing and what are some of the concerns that you have as a teacher what are some of your anxieties or fears or the thoughts maybe that go through your minds i know i definitely worry about parents you know because you're going to have one parent that's like oh this doesn't exist it's not a real thing and then the other parent who's like way over the top about everything and so i worry about having a bunch of students in one room and every day a parent you know having some complaint or some worry about their child. Well, so-and-so didn't wear their mask around this kid, so I don't want them around them. And so right. like, okay, so now we have to deal with that. And it's things like that that you just don't, you don't think about, you know, until, you know, you're in that situation and it's like, well, now you've got 20 different opinions about this that's going on and 20 different people who raise their kids a different way. So then that's you put so that into, you know, a factor. And that just, it's a whole other thing that you have to think about on top of keeping all the kids safe and how you're going to teach them and things like that. So I just think parents and all of us are just going to have to use a lot of grace this year with each other because, you know, um, they're going to pull their mask down. They're going to not wear the mask when they're supposed to. They're kids, you know, they're going to have the the mask, you know, flipped across the room. They're going to wear it on their head. You know, it's going to be everywhere. (laughs) Um, but we're, we just, it can't be a situation that you're mad at the teacher every time that somebody doesn't do what they're supposed to do. The teacher's going to deal with it and each situation as they come, it's all new for all of us. We're all still learning. I went into the Dollar General store without a mask the other day. I about died. I'm like, oh no, I'm so, so sorry. I didn't mean to, you know? I mean, breaking the rules. But it's just a new world that we've not been used to living in. And these kids, are, they're, they've been used to being at home now and things have been, they do things and how they want to because they're at home. And another thing is like opening their own food, opening their own water bottles, um, filling up their own water bottles. I mean, they're going to have to zip their own pants and tie their own shoes where parents have sent them in the past. And I've taught them how to tie their shoes. I can't touch all those shoes and touch each other and get all those germs, touch all their food at lunch. They're just, they're going to have to be a little bit more independent than maybe they've had to be in the past. That's so. a good point. Yeah. Because it's hard, I mean, for the little ones to be able to peel off the fruit and yeah. the, I mean, the little packaging, like for the 
crackers and all mm-hmm. it is hard mm-hmm. you know so parents at home start training now mm-hmm. if you have yeah. six and younger start teaching them how to open up their own mm-hmm. things that's that really is a big deal and you know what mm-hmm. they spill things it's okay it yeah. ends up yeah, yeah, we they don't want to clean up. up. And we'll help as much as we can. I mean, I'm just playing. I keep wearing sanitizer around me, and I'm sure you will too. Just right. have it in your pocket or whatever. But you know, we want them to be as independent as possible. So we're not giving them anything either. I worry about that too. As much as them giving me something, I don't want to give anybody else something either. I would, right. I would never forgive myself if I made a child sick. You know. Right. Yeah, and then there's the whole. I think fear too is, you know. The first symptom that you have, it might be an hour. I mean, we live in Georgia, yeah. you know, we, we have ragweed season coming up. Mm-hmm. You're going to be having runny noses mm-hmm. and all that. And how many days do you get off a year, you know, if you mm-hmm. call in every time? Because I know before, I'm, I'm pretty tough. I'm not going to not work just because I have a runny mm-hmm. nose. But now you can't do that, you know. It's, yeah. it's a different definitely different so do you have colleagues maybe that that have expressed anything specific fears or anything that you know or is it just kind of about the same across the board uh, nobody specifically that I work with has uh, you know voiced it to me and I, 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 but I mean you, you know that it's out there you know so um, I, I'm not overly concerned you know what one of the big things Things that I keep hearing from our administration is flexibility. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess the only really concern I have is like, do we have a plan? I'm, I'm one of those I like, I like knowing exactly what we're going to do. I, I don't like flying by the seat of my pants. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess that's really the struggle that I'm going to have this year is just you know trying to get used to everything on the fly and realizing that we're going to have to adapt and change probably a lot this this year. Right. There might, might be a period you have to transition to online for a right. short stint and come back. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we just really don't know. Do you feel more prepared since y'all had to do that back in the spring and now you've kind of gotten used to it or you know how it works? Because it happens so fast. It's like, okay, online, here you go. Well, our county really pushed for every teacher to go and get uh, certified as uh, Google certification level okay. one. So, you know. Yeah, the, that's what you yeah. It was, you know, it was interesting. I mean, you know, as being in PE the last seven years, I didn't really have to spend a whole lot of time, you know, creating all these Google documents and stuff. But, yeah, I mean. I have to say, though, your online PE lessons were the bomb. So, <laughs> you so, rocked it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. it I, I can make some videos. That's, uh, yeah. that's uh, yeah. with the help of the family. Right. So, right. Yeah, your family so funny. Anything, yeah. any video y'all put up to look. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, go ahead. well, we have some teachers that are kind of apprehensive because we do. We have a couple that are pregnant, so mm-hmm. they're um, kind of apprehensive and not. I mean, they're coming back, obviously, but they do have some some worries about things because. It's a little different. They talk about um, we'll sanitize all the time during transitions. Well, in elementary, you're in that same. We're in that same room pretty much all day long, except for lunch. So I, we just have questions about like the sanitizing process. Is the spray okay to do around the kid? You know, is and what will we do with the kids while we sanitize? You know, those kind of things that all, like Jacob said we're going to have to be flexible and a lot of things we're not going to know till we get in that situation and we're going to have to figure it out right. and um and that's what teachers do i mean i feel like that's our whole yeah. that's we have to do that we're flexible and right. well, i like that word that's kind of funny that's what i had a meeting with my consultant and that was her big thing was be flexible right. i'm sure you are flexible this year so that must be the yes. Yes. catchphrase yes. <laughs> be that flexible is. So what about the kids? I know you have kids in school, you've got high school, and you've got a little one. Um, and Pastor Richie is over here. You probably can wave and get your <laughs> hand in there. Um, so tell me a little bit about what the kids are saying, or sometimes in the younger ones they're not saying anything, they're just acting out. <laughs> so tell me, I mean, and they see a lot of the news. They see... And I know the, the news is terrifying, to, and I don't watch a lot of it, but, um, you know, there's 
there's the images of the stretchers and you know there's a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. they see and then they all of a sudden they're seeing people they know with a mask on and and so what are the fears of the kids well i think what i'm seeing in benjamin is he's reacting to what i'm reacting to so i have to be very careful how i react to things because he feeds off that if i'm anxious he's anxious well mom what what about what i'm like calm down it's okay we're gonna be fine we're gonna get through this like it's all gonna be okay god's got us in this we're gonna be fine because if i freak out then he freaks out so i have to be very careful right. with my words and my actions and how i react to things i can't like overreact to stuff that's a great parent tip <laughs> <laughs> you get to write that down don't overreact Anything you uh no i mean my it's funny seeing the transition for my kids because like Drew, whenever we first went on to the, the online, like, he was pumped. He was like, I, I don't have to go to school, okay? I can do this. But then when he started to have to do the work, he was like, this is awful. Yeah. And so now he's gotten to the point where, please just send me back to school. I think that the kids need that routine. Yeah. You know, they need the, they need the, the social interactions and stuff. And... Uh, I can notice Della is kind of listening in anytime me and Stacy talk. Like if we're talking about school at all, she wants to know. Right. She's going into middle school this year. She's super excited about it. And fifth grade didn't end the way she wanted to. And so, uh, you know, for her, it was really important that she wanted to get back in school, see friends, you know, get in a routine. Right. And, and Drew's begging for that routine now. I'm ready just to get back. Right. So. I don't know. They're not super anxious. They're not talking about that. But at the same time, in our house, we, we don't leave the news on all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, no. we're not constantly talking about this. So, you know, in their little world, it's okay, we're out in public. Let's throw a mask on because we have to. But, like, they're not really processing any of the, you know, well, this could happen kind of thing. Right. They're not really scared about that stuff. Right. Well, you've got the dangers of the virus and being sick, but then on the flip side of that, like you were saying, just being out of the routine and away from their friends, there's a whole different depression and, you know, mm -hmm. other issues that kids deal with from missing their friends and missing, you know, what they had. So, yeah, it's tough. So give me some pointers and you started really good about what parents can do to make this and there's some I mean probably some very basic things like get your kid in bed at night yes. you know get them yes. up, make them eat breakfast <laughs> there's some you know but let's just go through some tips did you bring a list Laura I did that's what teachers <laughs> do look at show everybody show your list that's awesome <laughs> Oh, I was just saying, um, just talk to your child about how school will look different this year, especially ones kind of different from ones that haven't been in school, but um, especially ones that have been in school, um, just talk to them how it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen this year. Just lay it out to them because kids want to know. Right. They want, they're like us. They don't, they want to plan. They don't want to walk in and be like, what are we doing? Right. What's going on? What do you mean you can't walk in with me? What? Kind of set them up for that. This right. is what's going to happen. We're going to drop you off. Here, this is what we're doing. You're gonna wear a mask or you're not gonna wear a mask or whatever is going on. Um, find out how they're feeling and validate those feelings. You know, fear is a real thing. You know, it's not, oh, you'll get over it, don't be scared. No, fear is fear. Okay, yeah, you're scared. Okay, let's talk about that. Why are you scared? What makes you scared? Kind of go through those kind of things. Um, anticipate behavior changes. Maybe there might be some crying involved. Might be a little irritation. I know about that one from little Benjamin. <laughs> um, <laughs> might be some sadness, some difficulty sleeping, might change eating habits, difficulty concentrating. Wow. Um, just stay informed and stay connected to the school the best you can, even though I know you can't go to the school. But, you know, we have our websites. I use mm -hmm. Class Dojo, so make sure you're on whatever platform the teacher's using and stay connected as to what's going on. Hopefully, and the teachers teacher, are good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. teachers will. Yeah, and I always try to upload like pictures of things we're doing during the day so the parents have an idea of what our day looks like. So even though they're not there, I try to show them, hey, this is what we're doing. So I, keep them I think teachers just want the parents to be honest with them yeah. about things. Like 
if you don't want your child to wear a mask, tell the teacher, you know, maybe they have asthma, maybe they just, maybe it, it strikes more fear in them if they put a mask on. Maybe you want them to wear the mask every time they go out in the hallway. You know, whatever your expectations are for your child. And the teacher will try to um, do everything she can to make sure that happens. And it'll make you feel better that you've been honest with the teacher. Write her a note, send her a dojo. You know, teachers are, they want to have an open communication with the parents. Mm -hmm. And want everybody to have a great year. I mean, that's the goal. For everyone is to to have be safe but we want to have fun and we want them to learn and and it's not I don't want to go to school every day and that because I don't I didn't before with the flu I didn't go in the door every morning thinking this might be the day I get the flu today I, I never thought about that I just went in and I did my job and I loved those kids and that's what I want to do with this and I feel like um, the more honest communication we can have with parents and just being open and discuss things if you have concerns just don't go to social media with it because we get that right. a lot say that at one more time <laughs> make sure everybody just, hears that just don't go on facebook and blast the teacher <laughs> after, until you've like had a discussion with go to the teacher first even before you go to the principal because the, i mean we got a new teacher right here she's gonna make mistakes i'm 28 years and i'm gonna make mistakes and with nice. these these whole new, all these new rules, we're all going to just be flying around for a while. So just grace, patience, mm -hmm. and just connect, communication is going to be the best best thing we can do. Right. Right. When my kids were little, one thing, sometimes kids, they want, they won't just come out and say what's wrong or that they're afraid right. and all that. And you have to look for warning signs of, mm -hmm. you know, kids withdrawing or like you said, sometimes they might start acting out. One thing I learned that worked with mine, and they're probably being embarrassed <laughs> um, because they're so old, but they're parents, some of them now. But um, one thing I did at nighttime, part of our routine, I, I, I learned that my kids would open up to me more if it was dark. And so before they went to sleep, I would spend just a little time mm -hmm. with the light off in their room. And of course, we would pray. But before we would pray, I would ask them two questions. What was the best thing that happened to you today? And what was the worst thing? Mm -hmm. And that just kind of opened a door for my kids to say, well, you know, Mary pushed me on the playground, you know, or, you know, I got to do something special. Maybe I wouldn't have ever known if I hadn't asked. But sometimes at a time of non-conflict or, you know, when the lights are dim and they feel like they can open up, you can just ask and they may, you know, start to verbalize some of the things that they're thinking and feeling. Um, and, of course, Right. Um, I'm telling you, you know, and I don't know if parents ever, I don't know if they, I guess they'll be taking, some kids will be taking lunches, but, you know, even if it's just a little verse in the lunchbox or in the pocket or somewhere, some kids can't read yet, but even if it's just a, you know, a reminder of a Bible verse, if it's a picture, um, it's so important to start teaching kids now to hide God's Word mm -hmm. in their hearts so that when they're afraid, they can know that God is for me, He is with me, He is there. And that takes time. It takes time to um, to instill the Word of God, but you have to be intentional about it. And I think about the Old Testament that talks about, um, Rich, you might have to help me out because I didn't write this down. <laughs> but it's uh, the verse about you're coming in, you're going out. You know, it basically means that all throughout your day in your normal routines when you're eating dinner when you're in the car going to school when you're you're coming home you're all of those daily activities you have that constant communication open and you're teaching this your child a, a christian worldview but you're constantly talking about it. it's just normal every part of the day it's not something christianity is not reserved for sunday mornings when they come to church but it's it's just a life that we live. It's a lifestyle of trusting and obeying, you know, God and, and having that relationship. So it's really, really important now more than ever, I think, mm -hmm. um, to get our kids grounded in knowing that 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 Jesus is really listening and caring. You want to add anything to that, Pastor Richie? <laughs> Off camera, <laughs> any scripture, <laughs> anything? <laughs> No, it, it's tough for these guys to uh, to start something completely different. And 
that, that's something we've been talking about on Sunday mornings. We've been studying the Beatitudes, and it's all in your attitude. And, you know, it's how you how you handle situations, and so these guys are going to be doing something completely different. Mm-hmm. And it's just how the attitude they have as they go into it. They can have a good attitude about it and move on, or they can have a bad attitude, and it's going to be a struggle for everybody. Right. Right. But it's not going to be impossible. No. You guys will be able to do yeah. it. Um, what about, I've been seeing y'all's things on Facebook, your classroom stuff, and I've been out of the loop. I've been in the class for six <laughs> weeks, and I've opened up Facebook, and I'm like, well, I didn't get you anything. <laughs> I didn't know. So is there, what do you need for your room? And you mentioned something about hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes. You can um, find those. Yeah, you can find that kind of Lysol spray, yeah. Kleenexes, paper towels, anything to clean. <laughs> clean. Yeah. Right. Anything we can clean with. And if you want to drop those items off here at the <clears throat> church, we'll be glad. I'm sure all the teachers we have will be, might be mm-hmm. fighting for them in the right. back. But, um, but yes, those um, supplies. And do you guys need anything? I, I guess you need cleaning uh, disinfectant stuff. Disinfectant stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, Kleenexes. Mm-hmm. Band-Aids. Yeah. I got through a lot of Band-Aids. Oh, I Yeah, I do too. Band-Aids. Yeah. That's a good one. That yeah, good. Band-Aids are, are, are a biggie. I don't right. Every every time somebody falls, it's it's a, they either need an ice pack or a Band-Aid. That's it right. doesn't matter what happened or how severe it is. It's... Because yeah. it always makes it good. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. So ice packs, band-aids, mm-hmm. Lysol, um, tissue, tissue, good paper towels that absorbs. Yes, <laughs> like Bounty. Can yes. we name yes. brand names? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get the cheap thin ones. Okay, so this is your first year, and I think I ask you guys to think of a piece of advice we could just bless you <laughs> with before you step into this crazy role. Miss Laura, you want to go first? It's going to be okay. <laughs> just know you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. I'm going to make mistakes. <laughs> you're going to make mistakes and it's going to be okay. <laughs> just It just will. <laughs> Give yourself a break is what I would say. Yes. If you do something wrong, don't beat yourself up about it. Let it go and move on to the next thing because there'll be something else the next day so when that first parent sends you the nasty note you just laugh about it and you just go on and you just know they somebody was having a bad day <laughs> and you just got the brunt of it um uh, i would say find a strong mentor in the building mm-hmm. wow. that was uh you know coaching and teaching I, when i was at lafette middle school there was a there was a guy that i co-taught with and the best coaching advice he gave me was treat every one of these kids like they're your own kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, how you coach them, how you teach them, you know, how, how you want your son and daughter to be treated. And that was some of the best advice I've had. Awesome. So. Right. That's good. Mm-hmm. Well, I think y'all said it all. I think you, you said grace, I think, earlier. Yeah. And, um, that's something to remember to, to Pray for it Mm -hmm. and to extend it because it is going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. And God was not surprised by any of this. He knew Mm -hmm. before time. And so now we're just responding. And um, people know that you are Christians and they are watching us. You know, Mm -hmm. they're watching how we respond and how we handle ourselves through this and I know I, I've got faith in all of you I know you're a bright light where you are and I know that um, you know you don't have to say anything but your your face can say it all and you have a peace and a joy and your kids are blessed to have you and Laura I get to see you in action all the time Mrs. <laughs> <Nancy. Bye-bye>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean it is such a blessing to be able to to teach and so thank you and I think this is all I have I'm gonna close in prayer um, and if anybody has any prayer requests throughout the week, please uh, send an email to me at Rhonda at BPCNAZ.org. And uh, we'd love to pray for you during the week. And we're going to, I'm hoping to, I was going to do a service this coming Sunday to kind of, you know, pray and have, you know, more of a concentrated prayer time for teaching and, and for students. But it keeps getting pushed back, so I didn't do it for this Sunday. But, um, Hopefully soon, um, I would love to, to gather you guys, spread you out apart around the altar, and bring all of our, like I said, we've got great teachers in our congregation, and just pray God's 
blessing and protection upon you to give you wisdom and discernment and grace and protection and all those things. So let's pray and then we'll close. Lord, I thank you so much for our teachers of our congregation and Lord, you have put them in their areas to be a bright light for you. And God, I pray that as they navigate these uncharted waters and as they they go to their, their areas, Lord, I pray that you would just your grace would just beam through their eyes that they would have a calmness and a sense of peace that people would know something is just different and lord i pray that their children would pick up on that lord i pray that they would look forward to going to school to uh, be with their friends but their teachers just to feel your presence lord they will these teachers will carry your presence into this school system and lord i pray that the kids would pick up on that and lord i just Lift them up to you. Um, some of our kids, are, they come from from broken homes, and they come from um, homes that, Lord, that, that they don't get a lot of love. And I know sometimes in the school system is the only place that they get it. And, Lord, there's some kids, Lord, that is probably right the opposite. They're spoiled to death. And um, as a teacher, you have kids that have so many different needs. And, God, I pray that you would give our teachers grace and wisdom and discernment to be able to go to each individual child and just give them the love and the care that they need. And Lord, I open their minds that they learn all that they can. And Lord, I pray for protection from this virus. And Lord, that's just one issue that we've talked about tonight is um, the changes with the virus. But Lord, we know there's other dangers in schools that's always at the back of our minds. We think about the the shootings and the violence and things like that. So, Lord, I just ask that you would just put a hedge of protection around each of our teachers that are here tonight and around their classrooms, around their school, around their counties, and, Lord, keep them safe. And, Lord, we just thank you so much for loving us and for um, entrusting us with such a ministry. And we want to make you proud. We want to honor you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.